Here I am, Leon C, a.k.a. Morpheus. You are now listening to the Academy of Wow, Mun. And here today I'm going to talk straight and forward to you. I didn't spare no ex expenses when it came to this research. And I would have my soundboard and everything prepared and ready for you. But this conversation is going to be a little bit too serious to play around with. Because <laughs> you see the title there. And uh, this sort of information is definitely help for men. This helps men on the uh, on a universal scale. But it also brings awareness to women as well, as it should. And it's a very vital subject because it is something that's being done in disguise. Where even, you could say, the most prestigious smart guy is not aware of. But we're going to talk about it. I'm going to start this lesson by telling you a real life story of actually a man that I know of personally. <clears throat> and um, it blew my mind. So I had to be careful as to how I present this to you because some people are going to be offended. No, I think a lot of people are going to be offended. This this sort of video isn't going to be very popular. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, social media or probably even YouTube would try to sw sweep it under the rug. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to take it down. I would not be. Because some of them are behind this as well. And they probably even actually agree with this sort of activity. But I need you to keep that tab why I'm saying that as I continue to tell you the story and shine some light on the situation you will see for yourself exactly what I mean a guy friend of mine had a wife who consistently had health problems and her health problems were actually getting worse by the year, by the years that they have been together. They've known each other for a good 12, 13 years. And they have one child together. And it started off with frequent visits back and forth to the hospital with her doctor. And some of the symptoms, or you could say the conditions, were so bad where she was having problems with her ovaries and odd cysts on her ovaries. She had an extreme case of migraines. She would also have an ongoing case of yeast infections every so often including with skin rashes and a healthy dose of sleep apnea. And so the doctor couldn't quite figure out what was going wrong with this wife of his and the doctor had done blood tests on her to get a little bit more in depth. And so her, uh, you can say, my best friend was a bit frustrated, so he decided to come to me as if I'm a doctor. I'm not, but I have a lot of information. I told you this before in practically all of my audios. I have a lot of information. Should you choose to accept or not, it's up to you. But most of my work is valid, and it makes sense, and it is helpful. So when he came to me, he said he doesn't, he don't know what else to do. And usually a yeast infection is also an indication of something else that's going on in her life, such as if she's cheating, 
laying with other guys? What is it that she's doing? This was a question mark that this guy had. He often wondered if there were some type of allergens or some sort of um, connection between her and her dog that they've had for quite some time as well. The dog is no longer a, a puppy, but a full-grown dog. And that didn't seem to be the case in his mind, nor the doctor didn't even, didn't even think about the connection as well, besides the allergies and the fur and, and probably the saliva that the dog might leave every so now and every so often in whatever vicinity or area that the dog may be. I found it very curious why the doctor couldn't figure out what was wrong with his wife, with her bad health problems and her issues. He's supposed to be a doctor, right? Which usually validates my point on the often when I'm having conversations about health and most people, they always think that doctors are God. They're not God. They make mistakes too. I'm gonna let you know now, just because you spent 10 years with your face and your eyeballs in a book don't mean you know shit. You can still be a fully well-blown, acknowledged individual of a jackass as well. But guess what? It's all right because I forgive you. So basically he didn't get his answers anyway. And as it usually goes, the doctor didn't really put in any pieces that needed to be uh, brought to the table. No solutions, right? Just continual medication, just continual, take this for your yeast. Take this for your migraines. Just take this, Mel. No real solutions. No real uh, uh, collective information of what it could possibly be. Just let me continue to just string you along as a constant patient, right? That sort of ordeal until he came to me. <laughs> and so I began to go in depth again, ask him some questions as to uh, how long has this been going on? And what is her life habits? Which is the first question I'm gonna ask besides how long it's been happening. What is her life habit? What is she doing at home? How do you know that she's not laying with someone else? So the guy tells me that he knows his wife for such a long time, he trusts her and he knows that she's not at home laying with another man and she doesn't go out much. She's not the party type of girl or hot, su hot summers. Uh, hot girl summer and that he is thoroughly ensure that maybe it's just some type of biological issue that she has that he just overlooked when he first met her or some sort of genetic deficiencies that just so happened to rise in her um, in her growing years so as a friend and a very, very good consultant of information and a compendium of so many insights and possibilities, uh, I did the best thing that I could do at the moment. I told him, I said, I, do, do me a favor, let me evaluate her. And how I'm going to evaluate her is, let's hang out, let's let's go places, Let 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 you, you come around, bring your wife. Let's go places. Let's go to eat. Let's let's uh, let's do dinner at home. Let me let me watch her. Let me let me see what's going on for myself. And I guarantee you, I come up with the solution. Okay, I'm not going to give you a pill like your doctor was trying to do. I'm not going to sit here and try to recommend you to a psychologist. No, 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 no. Let me see. Because there is something in human activity that always explains what is, uh, what you call that obscure, like body language, for one. 
not only body language is habits for two and also um personality and how you're carrying yourself all those things that that you can't put into a bottle to try to mitigate or manipulate can be seen with just a bit of a little bit of time and with the talents that i have i'm good with watching human activity very good at that and understanding what you're doing and what your mindset is and eventually come up with a conclusion so at first he was kind of skeptical and said i don't know what that's going to solve but okay sure i mean we have in these constant situations i don't know if that's going to heal her but if that's what you uh if that's what you recommend okay all right i'll go along with it but ladies and gentlemen, there's a reason why I did this, but let's continue. Just just watch, watch what's getting ready to happen. Slowly but surely, watch, okay? So of course, we hang out and I'm watching them together. And I watch her and her dog as well. Bigger dog, boy dog, okay? She has a closer relationship with the dog than that dog has a relationship with him. So the the dog is basically closer to her than it is to him in any situation. If she runs in the kitchen, the dog goes in there. Uh, when she's uh, when she's getting ready to come home or she's coming home, the dog always anticipates. Like if we're sitting there in the front room and we're having a conversation and the dog is sitting there on the, uh, probably on the couch or in the corner Usually he'll just run to the door and you would think it's a natural reaction, but bear in mind, let's just go along with this. Let me continue with the story here. And so I'm jotting this down and keeping a mental note, not telling him yet what my conclusions may be. Okay. And so this goes on for a good two or three week period of a time, you know, maybe once every Friday, something like that, two days in one week. Three days separate on one. Go out to a banquet or something like that and just watch how she walks around and how she socialized with people. And given that she didn't have that much of a social uh, network and didn't really socialize uh, outside of her husband and she was very careful of uh, not contacting, you would say, non-business people, could have been a very difficult case to crack, but it was very easy very easy so one day revelation came into the mix a very sick revelation but I do the work and there's a reason why again my name is Morpheus there's a reason why there's a reason why I have this channel there's a reason why people uh, I'm sought after there's a reason why I get the respect. There's a reason why I have my three companions because action speaks louder than words because I do the work not to uh, blow my head up and pat myself on the shoulders. No, there's a reason why. If you got talent, you got talent. If you got it, you got it. If you don't, you just don't have it. So we were conversating in the kitchen once again and you know he's cooking up some some nice shish kebabs, right? Putting it on a plate after coming from outside, so forth, so on, right? And the kitchen was kind of in an angle where you can see what's going on in the who goes in and out of the bathroom. That is the guest bathroom on the first floor. And I can see the light, of course. Uh, the light was still on in the bathroom and the door is pretty much uh halfway open and I'm just watching because this is what he well this is what he wants me to do and what I wanted to what I suggested as well this is the method of the madness because I know what I'm doing and at my time at that time I had uh, one of my companions with me not to cause too much confusion and because I know how girls do when they get together it's a very I'm not even gonna I'm not gonna jump off subject with that when I have my three companions all at one time and other girls come along in the scene it, it they it just distracts the entire situation they just want to sit there and, and giggle and talk and conversate 
there weren't no time for that. I needed to minimize the distraction. And so I noticed that she comes from downstairs and she has like this towel on and she hurries up and go into the bathroom respectfully, right? Knowing that there's guests in the house. And the, the door is still pretty much cracked open. So she wasn't indecent. You know, this is something that she normally does anyway. And I noticed that the dog goes in the bathroom after her but then stands there in the doorway wagging his tail and watching her for a few minutes. And I'm just waiting. While talking to him, I'm looking at the same time and waiting to see when she's going to tell the dog to leave or is she going to close the bathroom door? Is she going to shush the dog away? Right? Is she going to uh, push the dog back or what? But the oddest thing happened, which is really what solved this particular case and was the nail in the coffin for me to say, okay, I know what to do now as your professor, right? There's another reason why I'm called professor too, because situations like this. <laughs> the dog goes in the bathroom all the way, tail disappears. And she closes the door. And I wait, and I wait, and I wait. And the dog never comes back out, never leaves. Okay. So in mid conversation, I'm speaking with him and he's, he have no idea. He's oblivious to all this. Sitting there talking and eating and doing his manly thing. I said, I tell you what we're going to do. I, I, uh, we're going to go ahead and cut the chase with all this. This is what I, I suggest for you to do about the conversation of what we were talking about. And he said, Oh, okay. Yeah. You said, what did you, what did you think? I didn't see too much and I, I don't, I don't know what you've gathered, but what, what do you, what do you suggest Morpheus? I said, hire a private investigator that's what number one hire a private investigator when you leave the house that's what I want you to do you do that you got me that's what I need you to do and I also want you to some kind of way we're going to have to figure out some kind of way she's going to have to be swabbed take a sample a fluid sample from her below and get this thing to a laboratory and get this tested. That's what you need to do. And I asked them as well, when was the last time that they been in any type of intercourse? And he says it's every now and then. But when he, now this is wife, so we know the deal behind that. When there ever was any intercourse, he says he's rather again nervous because of the interactions that she's having below or the issues that she's having with the yeast and all sorts of uh, rashes that are that's just surfacing from some strange place so this is why he needed this to be solved so he can continue to have regular donkey dunk intimacy with his own wife okay so anyhow those are the two things I needed him to do, ladies and gentlemen. Story goes that yes, he hired the private investigator, okay? And no one came in and out of the house. There was no other person, be it her walking around the dog outside or chasing the dog out, you know, where the stop sign is and back or some something of that vicinity. No odd cars in front of the house. She didn't go wild places whenever she did have to leave and go somewhere that was important. Everything seemed to be normal. Nothing was out of place. Nothing suspicious. Nothing to raise the alarm about. Okay? Now, what he did, uh, I'm not going to say how he did it or 
what item it was. I don't want to give any type of ideas, but he was able to grab an item or something that did have some of her DNA there in her, well, you could say bodily fluids. And uh, he already, well, he sent that away. But before those results came back, finding out that, of course, during the investigation or the investigator, knowing that everything was okay, that she wasn't actually laying with any other man, I came up with a plan number three for my friend. I said, you need to sneak on her and see what happens when she's in the house, because I think I know what's going on. Now, what are you talking about, man? That's his, that's his, uh, that was his response. You know, what are you talking about, man? How do you know? You know, who are you? You know, you're the outsider. You know, what, what do you know what's going on? What do you know that I don't know? I said, you need to sneak on her. When you go into the house, find a way to sneak into your house, your own house, when she's there. All right? Now, this is not recommended if your girl is, uh, very risky as as a matter of fact and at the same time trained in firearms martial arts or something like that and she's already scary she's uh ptsd or something like that where she may think you're an intruder that could be a problem right you find yourself in the front page of the magazine but for this situation sometimes walls have to be broken rules have to be bent for the sake of uh, getting a result risks have to be made made you lose some and you win some so I said you go it's your house go in there and sneak in there and see what you find don't let her know you there I need you to see the interaction between her and her dog that's what I want you to see because I don't think it's a I don't think it's another man involved. I think, sir, I think it's it's not another man. It's a beast. It's an animal that you're competing against. Quiet crickets. Yeah, just like that, crickets. In disbelief, out of his mind, and of course saying what more, most people will say, you out of your mind, man. She wouldn't do nothing that's sick. That's something that she would never do. I know her more than you know her. And as I explained to him, I said, hey, you wanted me to help you. I have valid suspicion. I've gathered all the information. I've told you what I've known. You've, you've had your private investigator and pretty soon your uh, DNA scan is going to come back but whatever fluid that she got going on down there which is going to lead to even more details so what more are you looking for you know this this right here is the pinnacle you want to know what's going on and as I also continued to explain to him I said I know people and I watch body language and I read the communication that's being uh, displayed without words man that dog is her boyfriend that's that's not her pet that's not your pet okay she's using that dog for the things that you're not doing or can't do and this is the reasons for her situation and he was still in very very deep disbelief hard for him to accept that reality and I also explained to him that I was watching the dog as well and watching the behavior of the dog and knowing women, knowing people, knowing how, and this is still America, how sick American people are. It is no mystery and no wonder at all. And I've explained to him, I said, I looked into the dog's eyes and um, he got that look of a jealous boyfriend. That little low growl, that low, uh, what do you call that, possessiveness, that this is my B mindset, right? You know, B-I-T-C sort of thing. This is my, not yours. Right? This is, this is my coochie. 
there's reasons why dogs act like this. This this is not a coincidence. This is not just you could say dog nature. Oh, they just so protective. You know, they just they just love us so much. Bulls. No, absolutely not. No, no let me go. Let me keep going. Cause I'm getting fired up on this all too soon. All too soon. Just bear with me. So he didn't take it 100%. He didn't really gravitate to what I was saying. That's why I said, you need to see it for yourself. I'm the genius here. I'm a professor. And a professor is telling you what he knows. If you, if you think the professor is a liar and out of his mind, prove him wrong. So I said, you go sneak in there. You'll see it for yourself. I know exactly my my uh my conclusion is usually going to be 95% correct most times. It's going to be 95%. I'm going to make sure that I'm I'm not wrong based on evaluating the situation cuz when you assume something or you just think something's happening and it's not, that's when troubles happen. That's when you can mess up a beautiful thing or something that's uh quite innocent. I don't go down that road. So yes, he does this, my listeners. And you want to know what he found? Let me explain it to you. He slid in the house undetected. Walked up the stairs very quietly. Bedroom door was halfway open. And yes, he sees the dog's tail waggling. And... His girl, in her birthday suit, on the bed, and that same waggly tail was connected to the dog, which was actually united with her. In full action for him to see. That was the reason for her yeast infections. That was the reason for her migraines. That was the reason for her discomforts. That was the reason for her ovarying problems. That was the reason for her rashes. That was the reason why he ended up getting some itchy and scratchies as well and getting sick every so often. That was the reason why her health was declining because she was donkey dunking and frolicking with the dog itself. And according to reports, this has been going on for a long time, which indicates the relationship between her and the dog. See, I normally don't say too many names on my channel, but I have to for reference for this particular conversation that we're having today. A guy named Kevin Samuels said that there's a lot of, are going to be a lot of dog moms. Or she have to be a dog, or he says something like, buy a dog and die alone or something like that, right? This is kind of getting around the monkey in the middle. The reality of it is there's no such thing as a dog mom because you didn't give birth to the dog unless you are a damn dog yourself. You're not a dog mom. When it comes to a female, you become the dog's Girlfriend, or other people have a different name besides that that starts with a B. These dogs aren't their children or kids, they are their boyfriends. These dogs become territorial and they actively see this woman as such as a companion mm -hmm. 
And what's worse is that it swept under the rug where nobody wants to talk about it and everybody looks over it as if it's not happening. Now, I did not say all. I said generally. Dogs are still animals and a lot of times they don't have a filter. They're just going to be loyal and do whatever you tell them to do. And we understand and overstand and know that women, if they're left, if left to their own devices, they will do the unthinkable. I know two and three other stories that are just as bad and just as sick, but we don't have time to talk about it because we need to break down this situation. One of my non-negotiables when I am talking to a girl is, is she a pet owner of a dog? If she says yes, it is an automatic no for me. Pack your bags, get the hell out of here. We have no, we have nothing to talk about. I can curl us what the excuse is, whether he's a seeing eye dog, he's to bring comfort to you. He's been in the family since he was two years old. Somebody gave him to you. I don't give a damn. Take you and your animal, which is an animal, and go somewhere else. Period. This is not a hatred for animal, nor women. This isn't misogamy, nor is it against nature, because I enjoy nature. I tell you that all the time. I am the Indian chief. I enjoy nature. But there are things in the human psyche in animals should never mix. And when the average human becomes desperate, they will do the unthinkable, especially if there's no logic entailed. There are some species among us that don't care about what type of face that you have on. It's whatever is whatever. Free love is free love. As long as they're giving you emotional attention and curling up on your lap and licking you in your face and licking your dirty kneecaps, you don't care as long as they're giving you attention and a little bit of loyalty love. You'll sleep with it. They got another word for this. And of course, people call it obesity. Obesity has been going on for a long time. So nobody want to talk about it. That's why I'm almost sure that YouTube and the rest of these strange creatures are going to try to sweep this under the rug because I'm saying something that'll leave them uncomfortable because they're probably doing this bullshit themselves in the barn house. Diseases aren't given to us by nature. It's not. The other viral situations that happen to your body, this doesn't it just this isn't something that just comes out of the ground. This is due to the activities of sick people who have no filter and have no morals and is willing to open up themselves, or in this case, their legs, to an animal and receive that animal's nasty DNA and share it with you men or the world, which eventually, during the genetic processes, and you could call that bacteria interfacing, incubating the next stage of disease or sickness that leaves the doctors stumped where they don't know what's going on with this person's body. This strange bacteria, this strange yeast infection coming from somewhere with animal DNA. And as a matter of fact, when he saw that for himself, he just went ahead and counseled the, uh, <coughs> excuse me. He was gonna counsel getting that DNA scan off of that item but he went ahead and let them go through it anyway, just to have it. So he can use that as future evidence in the cases that are to come. But after which, 
when that blew up like that in front of him, he's been a changed man ever since. I bet. Didn't want to listen to the professor. And again, it goes to show as well, not to jump off the topic. This is why I often tell you in most of my audios that there is just some dumb men, stupid, where y'all... I voucher to say some of you men think it's a cool thing. How can I be jealous of the house dog, which is my dog, sharing my wife? That's how sick-minded you are, and you think it's okay and it's normal until they until the doctor has to evaluate you because you got odd lumps. You can't get up no more. You got erectile dysfunction. You got milky substance coming out of your body. You don't even know what it is. And the doctor can't heal you. Now you got untold cancer coming from different areas. Or pouring from different areas of your body. You don't even know how it got there. But it was it's cool for you to sit there and let or watch. This behavior going on between a human being and an animal. And you think it's fine. There's a reason why in some religions and in some cultures and traditional history that that was one of the number one abominations you could ever do. Or you could say sin against humanity. Because it's more than just crossing the barrier between human and animal. You're bringing in DNA, bacteria, disease, and disaster into your own culture and your kind. All for the sake of pleasure. You are out of your goddamn mind and you're sick. You can have your preferences however you choose. Keep your boyfriend mutt as you want him. He's not going to be around me. As a matter of fact, I don't care because I have options. You can go and live with your dog and your disease as well. There's a thousand other women that are cuter than you, younger than you, better than you, less disease than you that don't have a dog like you got that I can pick from. So I don't give three uh, seashells about how you think or what you feel about the situation. It's my preference and it's my safety. Hell no on your, what do you call that, profile, your dating profile. I got a dog. I got a greyhound. I got a German shepherd. I got a pet bull. I got a rock waller. You know what I'm going to say? I got a middle finger and I got a door. Get the moving. I don't give it about what you feel. I don't want you. Take you and your animal and you go somewhere else because I don't trust you and I have every valid reason not to. As a matter of fact, why do you have a dog? Why can't you keep a man instead? And why are you calling a dog your child? Why don't you go get a damn child? Talk about you a dog mom. The hell you're not a dog mom. You got? Do you have a dog or a womb down there? Now you having puppies? What kind of world are we talking about now? Oh, I almost forgot. This is a westernized concept. This is America's thinking. And y'all wonder why you so messed up in the head today. And you need a pulpit pimp pastor to tell you who you are on every corner store. Yeah, I say corner store because on the corner, on every corner, there's a church and a liquor store. For idiots just like you. Just like you. I never heard of this concept before. I can't have a child, but I'll go get a dog. I can't go get a boyfriend. I'll go get a dog. What? Excuse me? I can't go find a friend, so I'll go get a dog. Then you ask him why. Well, because this dog is loyal. This dog keeps me company, and this dog is, it, it can protect me. Oh, you want to know something? Oh, so can a man. A man can protect you, too. A man can be your be he can be your good friend as well. 
A man can be there and help you and be loyal as well if you treat him properly and you add value in his life. Oh, you so you're so you're that so self deficient. You're that sick. You're that psychologically broken, and you need help from a psychologist and a mental doctor. Instead of you reaching out to a mental doctor, instead of you reaching out to a psychologist, instead of you getting some real professional help, you decide to do the alternate and live an alternate life and breed in sickness into the society and lay with a monster, a beast, an animal. That to do whatever that you wanted to do. Lay there naked on the floor and say, hey, watch what this dog does to me from behind isn't it so cute and to the doctor the doctor has to actually cut out your uterus and everything else because it's riddled with black stuff and everything else that the environment don't need and has enough of and you think it's cute and your man probably think it's cute too he's probably the damn idiot holding the camera You know what's so bad? I'm going to tell you what's bad. Uh, you who are listening in this academy of wow men. This has been a wow moment. You know what's so bad is I don't hear a lot of people talking about this, but you definitely see a lot of dog walking women more now more than ever. And I also hear that... Um, Chewy as well. Chewy, the company, have had lots of single women as employees and also customers as well. Then when you ask her, hey, why don't you just go get a cat? Oh, you know, uh, no, cats, they're just sneaky. Cats, this is strange. I don't know much about cats. It's just... Cats aren't the same. They can't protect me. No, 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 no. You, you're, you're, no, you're a liar. You're a liar. You are a liar. No, it's because the cat's wing wing is too small. And you can't put peanut butter on a cat's lip and think that the cat is going to be dumb enough to mess with your used up, infested, nasty caution zone of a hazard between your legs. Cats are smarter than that. But you try that with one of your mutt dogs. Oh, you're going to have a happy time, aren't you? Because a dog will lick on anything, especially you. The last of what's worth to lick on. And sick enough to say, well, you know, I don't want a cat. I want a dog. Because you, you think you can get everything out of a dog, huh? Y'all want to know why? There's, there's two things here. You want to know why women call men dogs? I wonder. What are some of the men... Now, that we're getting into the red zone here. But I'm treading safely because this is facts. What are some of the things that are similar to a man versus a, a dumb mutt, a dog? Huh? There are two things. Doggy style and giving good head below. Licking stuff. Uh-huh. And then there's protectiveness. And then there's uh, the feeling of security. That's right. Both people can give that. The dog can give that and the man can give that. But if she can't get right by her man, right? And men can't be manipulated for a very long time. At least some of them that I know of. Even though half America is full of dumb nut men. Retards. Okay? But what can be manipulated and loyal and dangerous because they're loyal is the dog itself. 
And I don't want to get grotesque with it, but you already know. Uh, how can I put it? Their tongue, their tongue reaches further when it comes to lapping up water than the average male. Okay? And as far as the energy and the stamina is concerned, when it comes down to getting it in, in this sick case, how could it not be appeasing to the average mindless, ill, moral individual who can't actually find them a real goddamn man? while there's smoking weed and drinking at the same time. That's another thing about uh, uh, marijuana that a lot of people don't understand. Oh, it's not it's not a bad drug, man. You you know, you tripping dude and you know, people have passed away by alcohol more than anything and blah blah blah. The problem with any drug, whether it is heroin or your hemp Okay? Or your weed, as some people call it, technically. Psychotropics. It does something to your mind, your head. You don't think straight. You don't have clear vision as you should. You don't have a clear eye. Your path is muddled in a room. How I like to explain this to my students. When we come up with this argument, well, it's not all that bad, man. What do you mean? It's, it's not like you're going to... No, 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 no. Shut up and listen. Put your immature mind down and pick up your adult brain. Okay? Don't play stupid over here because I'll roast your ass. I don't play. I'm quick to roast. You have 50 people in a room. Imagine every person standing in the room is a brain follicle or a node. You can even, if you want to go even further, you can say it's a, uh, you can say a pillar of your brain, of your mind, which communicates with each other. And between the communication, meaning in between nodes and between each person, there is a certain interaction that builds up nerve, or you could say nerve connection. And that nerve connection bridges more sensitivity or less sensitivity depend on the communication between each uh, person standing in the room, or you could say brain node. So when you're smoking, imagine the smoke building up in that room of 50 people of your brain nodes, you could say pillars of each person. And remember the nerve connection between each person isn't really a physical thing in this case. Of course, in your brain and your mind and your body is different because you're gonna have a connection with your nerve. That's why I call it nerve endings. I'm talking about when you're speaking to an average person in this situation. In between you is where that smoke will go. And what happens is the foggier the room is, listen, the foggier the room is, the more dense it is with all this heavy smoke, the harder it is for one person to communicate with the next person. And you can barely see them because of how foggy it is because of the smoke and the smoke doesn't go away no time soon. And the stronger the smoke is, such as the marijuana or whatever brand that you have, you know you're going to be high for a while. You know you're going to be out of your mind with all the chemicals and other uh, psychotropics that are embedded with this junk that you don't know where it came from. You just smoke it because it just makes you feel good and it, it takes you away from uh, your sense of reality, which is stupid to me. I don't know why you want to be taken from reality instead of accepting reality. It's not like it's going to disappear and go away. Why don't you face it? Too big of a damn child. I get it. You ain't grown yet. It's jazz down in the corner and drink your milk. Anyhow, so what happens is you're not thinking straight. You can't. One of you as a node, you're trying to communicate with somebody across the room of the 50 people, which is a, a, a brain ending. Or you could say a, 
nerve connection down at that end so you can get a certain result out of your life or at, out of the team. You can't do it because of the fog in the room. But otherwise, if it was clear, you can probably call out over there or bend your head over there and see the other person waving at you. Say, hey, here I am. What's up, Tim? Oh, Bob, I see you over there. Hey, why don't you pass me that? We're getting ready to shift over here. Okay, I get it. Right? You can't do it because it's foggy now. And so what happens is you may be able to communicate very uh, stressfully with the people that are maybe the closest to you. You could say pillars or nerve endings that are nearest to you. But that's as far as it goes. Anything further than that, you're going to be fumbly. You're going to be a weakened person. You're not going to be thinking straight. You're not going to be, you're not going to make the best decisions. It doesn't operate like that. So when you hear people say, well, it's not going to hurt you. It's okay. It's just a bit of smoke. Get high. Go ahead. You're still an idiot. And you're still sacrificing something that's very vital in order to get a good, comfortable feeling just to escape reality. That's why it sells. Duh. If it's not going to, if it doesn't produce the effects that most, y'all not going to like, I'm going to say, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm just going to go ahead and say low minded people have to depend on. Yeah, I said it. If it doesn't give you the effect that you need, you're not going to buy it. And I can back up what I mean by low minded because life should be the thing to get you high. Focusing on your tasks, getting your business together, doing better for yourself should get you high. Dealing with things naturally with 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 healthy herbs, things that you eat and you function within your world get you going. That should be the thing to put a smile on your face, seeing your baby actually crawling and walking and succeeding. You know, seeing positive life changing events going on around you instead of always party all the time. Usually people who are party all the time, they need to get high and drunk because they're not themselves anyway. They want to escape reality. They don't want to be an adult yet. So they want to feel good. They want to get high. They can't they, they, they can't look at uh, reality for what it is, because if they see reality, they have to change themselves. And they're not willing to change from that child that they are to the adult that they need to be. They're not ready yet. So they're ready to get high and be stupid out of their mind. So you got all these escape facets and tunnels and possibilities that people are doing to themselves. How much more so when you have these other innocent animals just be, remember, a dog is still an animal. It's still an animal. I don't care what kind, you can name it Pete, name it little, little Bruler. Oh, that's Bobby. Oh, he's been in the family for 15 years. He's an old dog. But no, 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 no. He's still an animal. He's still an animal. Name it as you will. That's, the, that's, that's another thing that's kind of very funny about average human beings. I've said this before and I'll say it again. If aliens wanted to visit Earth and, and inhabit for a little while, y'all would make them leave and they'll leave on their own happily. They wouldn't even want to stay. Because the dumb, unintelligent, stupid things that the average human do is enough. You don't even have to, you wouldn't even have to threaten an alien. They'll just say, you know what, I'm out of here. All they got to do is look at how you live. Look at how you function. Look at the stuff that y'all think about. Look at what you do to yourself. I'm going to go ahead and put a coat on my dog and I'm going to name him a uh, Changelier. Look at him Changelier. Then I'm going to go get a glasses and put one glass on his eyeball. I'll make him look sophisticated. He's a sophisticated dog. Then I'm going to get his nails done. I'm going to get him uh, groomed and everything because that's my dog. I got the best. So I'm going to get the best to my dog as well. It's a damn animal. The aliens would be like, you know what? I'm out of here. Y'all are too lost. You are too lost. You're too, you, you're just too gone. You're gone as a race. 
all this technology, all these possibilities of advancement, but we're still stuck on stupid. Hey, that's my child. My God, I got to go home to my child. Oh, so that dog is your child now? Ma'am, have you forgotten that you are a human being? Oh, that's my child, you know? It's, it's not literally, but, you know, I'm just going to call it my child. It's a damn animal, ma'am. It eats and it craps different than you. Why don't you eat his dog food? When the dog sits down and eats out of its bowl, why don't you go ahead and curl up next to it and eat the that it's eating then? Since you won't be that stupid. Go ahead and chew on those kibbles and bits as well. And uh, join Chewy and let Chewy feed you then. Go ahead and go to Chewy and say, you know what? I'm going to breed the next batch of dogs. I'm going to go ahead and, and create a, a, a damnation. I want a poodle. Let me lay on my back and make a poodle. You ain't got no brains. You got no brains nor sense of self it's a disrespect to God and it's a disrespect to the universe and it is an abuse and robbery of nature and I'm going to give you a reprieve for a second here I'm going to go easy just for one hot second because I don't want you to think that I don't understand because I know it listen I don't know it all but I've been there and I've done that. I do this and many of you who know my channel already, I'm not called what I am for no reason. There's a reason why. When I say I am your professor here in the Academy of Wow Mun, and I'm also called Morpheus. Those aren't just synonymous. I mean, they're not just a title. These are reasons. And I didn't make them up myself. These are those who know me personally. I know when you can't have kids. I know it when you see this cute puppy and you've raised this puppy for a couple of years or so and you get attached to this puppy where you can't see the dog other than a family member. Or some people may say you're a child. But that doesn't excuse you of ignoring nature and how you are intermingling and mashing everything together, stating and making it clear to the world on often, because it's not me saying this, it's you all, it's on social media, it's practically everywhere you go, especially you go to the dog park, so you talk to average women. It is normal to them to say, oh, this is my child. I am a dog mom. And they will say that with confidence and pride. I am a dog mom. For whatever reason it may be. Yeah, you can't have kids. Yeah, you, uh, you've grown to love this, this dog of yours. But you want to know what else? It's also stating who you are not uh oh uh oh what do you mean Morpheus it's also stating who you are not mm -hmm. uh, like for one you're not compatible for a relationship so you gotta go get a dog uh huh or oh you've been in your career for so long and you've been stuck on yourself for so long You've been bougie and self-righteous for so long in your own circle for so long. The only person that will ever care for you is a dog. Because you ain't got no kids and you don't want to have kids and you can't have kids at this certain age. So the only person that's standing there is a dog with its tongue out wagging its tail waiting for you. And every other man who would try to fit into that role naturally as organic human bipedal species you are not compatible to be with them you can't handle being with them as a matter of fact you're not even adjusted to be with them because you've been so self and stuck on yourself for so long where it freaks you out 
the moment you got to go on a date with an actual human man. So instead of facing these struggles head on and getting therapy and a doctor, you rather be passive and go the non resistant way and get a dog who is loyal to do and probably be everything that you want this dog to be a disease on four legs. I know the drill. And I'm also not accepting no damn excuses either. You want to know why sometimes, and this, and I'm not even going to go there, but somebody just chimed in. And this is one of a, uh, it's a brown skinned sister. And I don't, I don't, I'm not going to repeat what she just said, but maybe in my own words, she's saying that this might be a cultural thing too. And I'm willing to say that I'm willing to say that most of it it is a cultural thing that there are some cultures who will do this sick stuff they they'll let their dog jump in the bed with them while they're doing stuff and the dog is sitting right there on the edge of the bed watching them eating popcorn having fun and flipping in the bed while they're butt naked and think it's cool Hey, Fido, Ralph, get down, Ralph the dog. Get down, leave. But instead of her or him, the white knight beta, kicking the dog out of the room, they leave the door open. And the dog is still sitting there on the bed or in the corner watching them. Seeing what he's going to be doing as soon as the boy leaves out of visual sight there are some cultures who just do things like that and it's normal you know, eat food next to their dog you know, while they're, they have a nice hamburger or something like that or a plate of food and their dog is sitting there sniffing all on the table with their wet nasty nose tongue all out slobber all over the bed all over the corner of the table. I know they do this sick sh I know this stuff. I've explained to you before that I'm all over the place, all over the world, especially the US. When I'm invited over certain types of people's house, I pick up on all this. I see the dog fur all over the place or some fur all over the wall well, that's just what he does dogs all mangy running around the house the only time they move the dog out of the way is because they see that I'm there get back go on go into the room if I wasn't there the dog is all over the place eating sleeping and crapping right next to him and you wonder where all these dark diseases are coming from and these odd things that these doctors can't heal with a pill you need surgery. You know, you're having heart palpitations or problems with your body because you're a human being trying to live unisly with animals. That's real gun ho stupid. Your DNA is not the same as a dog. Why would you try to be in bed with a dog licking all on your face? That dog just got to go into the bathroom and licking its own balls. And here you go standing there. Hey, oh my God. Oh, Chad. Oh my God. You try to wake me up in the morning by licking me in the face? My goodness. And you, your nasty self, instead of going to the bathroom and washing your face with bleach as you should. Yeah, I said bleach. You'll still stand there for a few minutes or lay back down in bed and lick your lips. After it. You might as well go ahead and help him clean his balls next time then. If that's the case, why don't you just go ahead and get down on your knees and say, let me help you out, Chad. You're itching your balls. You're licking it. Let me lick it with you. That's how crazy you guys are. That's how crazy it is. Technically and realistically, that is what it is. After the dog lick its balls and lick you in the face, you just got through licking the dog's balls. I mean, I can't make it no more simple than that. The DNA stretches like that. Duh, right? You can't separate the two. But yet you're like, oh, this is my house pet. That's Bobby. He's been around for a long time. 
He's no threat. And then you sick all the time, back and forth to the hospital and the doctor. And you're obese. You can't lose weight. You got high blood pressure. You get boils all over the damn place. You got bad hips. Your breath smell like asphalt. You can't figure out what's going on. You got gangrene welding up all over. Come on. Come on, somebody. Come wake the hell up. Trying to figure out where's all this stuff coming from because you got a damn animal in the house and an idiot owner, a sick owner. One of my girls, uh, I told you I limited my companions to three, right? Not that I have to, it's my standard. Because I have a, I got, um, Again, I don't want to talk about me. I really don't care. Uh, I'm going to put this. I know what I'm doing, right? I have a trajectory of life and I want them to really be uplifted where they're going to be spoiled girls. Okay. It's for them and they enjoy it, but they were willing to accept a fourth girl. But I had to deny this girl because she did have a dog. A big mangy mutt too. Hairy, stinky thing. Right? It's just like, well, you know, I've been single for a while and you know I got best friend, but the best friend I got is my dog here. Girl's about twenty four years old, right? Didn't look that bad. But here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen, that you need to understand about well why why not then? No, 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 stop, stop. For you in the back of the room, maybe that not in the front of the room, the front of the room, you guys up here in the front, you're okay. But you dodo dummies in the back, I'm smarter than you. That's why you in the back of the classroom. As a matter of fact, you should be honored you're in the classroom of wow men and greatness stands before you. This mercy is not going to extend to you for too much longer, as a matter of fact. Just be prepared. Because that sloth door is going to slam in your face eventually. I'm just being nice right now. Because I feel like it. I evaluate things not based on first interaction. I look things through. You can't give me something and I'm not going to look it straight through. But she presented herself. It wasn't going to be a no. I can't do you because you got a dog, even though that's already there. It's already a no, but I'm going to watch you as well. I'm going to look at you. So I did a surprise thing as I normally do. I said, hey, you know what? We're going to stop by your house today. So like, wait a minute. Well, what? Wait, wait, what? What do you mean? Um, 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 I'm not ready. And I was like, no, 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 no. Put your bottom lip to the top lip. We're, no. No, I don't need you lying to me because I know how. See, here's the trick. Most women that I have dated and been around and know of, once I tell them that I'm going to stop by for dinner or come check up on them or something like that, they're going to spend the whole day trying to keep their, get their house in order and clean up and put things away that wasn't normally away. Just right. No, 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 no. I want to see exactly who you really are, man. You ain't going to you're not going to. You are not going to lie to me. You're not going to. It wasn't going to be no date where I'm just going to schedule tomorrow or, oh, it's going to be nine hours from that. No, 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 no. We got her good. Me and my girls. Talking all that jazz. Oh, you know, I'm this sort of way and I'm very clean. And and yeah, you would never know that my dog is in the house. And you know what? I, and again, I said, but we're going right let's go right now it's just like right now is it right now right now right now we're gonna jump in our car my car and we're gonna we let's roll right now right now i'm ready to go let's go and the girl's like okay let's do it because they already know what time of day it is wait this is a drill this is what we do girlfriend number one two i mean not girlfriends excuse me they don't like that companion number one two and three they went through it themselves they know what time of day it is. They said, let's go. They already know. Yeah, we're going right now. 
I ain't going to give you a chance to try to hide your panties and try to hide what you... No, no, no. Your black books and your flippy flappies and your drills and deal... No, no, no. No. I want to see your plastic. I want to see everything that you got that you try not... No. Whoever's been there, whoever, you know, Jake's pants and 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 uh, whatever condoms you had sitting down on the or the nights. No. You ain't hiding that book. No, forget because... You gotta remember, ladies and gentlemen, I don't do social media as far as uh, dating is concerned. And I told you about uh, what do you call that? Trying to evaluate somebody based on how many likes and followers they got on, on Instagram and all that type of stuff. I'm not gonna try to evaluate you that way. I'm gonna do things organically and naturally. So this is one of my methods. I'm gonna figure you out simply just by going where you are. I'm gonna be where you are. Talk is no, my life is too. It's too important. So talk is cheap too short for me so I said oh so you want to hang out with us then we need to go check out your house right now you got the keys oh yeah but you know no, uh, but uh, uh, I'm not ready yet. Yeah, I don't give I don't give a sh I don't give it I don't give a care either you do it or disappear we don't have to talk to you fine go on somewhere you you a damn liar you lied to us you are dirty and you trifling then you can't prove it fine you're dirty and trifling go find you another guy somewhere Go back to Miami somewhere. You're for the streets, 304. I ain't got no 304s over here. Not in this door. Yeah, okay, well, you know, sure. So she nervous the whole time while we're on our way over there, right? Nervous. One of my girls texted me while I was driving. And I have hands free. And it shows up because I have my uh, cell phone all the way down, um, where it's out of reach so I don't touch my cell phone but when somebody texts me or call me I can just look over with my eyes and see what the message is right and one of my girls texts me and she said she's <laughs> she said the girl smelled like dog and she did actually as a matter of fact the car was smelling just a little bit of her dog and saliva nasty sick that I'm talking to you about all in her clothes sleeping all next to that see let me stop let me stop some of y'all not getting it nasty ass BS stuff as a matter of fact when she left I'm, I'm not even going to go that far let me stop 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 because I'm getting ahead of myself anyhow yeah she didn't smell all that good that was already indication number one my other companion text again. She was like, dang, this girl's... Oh, she got to go. Now, we wasting our damn time with this. All right, now, we're going to go. Let's finish the mission. Then we're going to go home. Let you know why I'm picky. Let you know why I'm very strict and very particular about who I want in my circle. Why I'm so serious about what I do. We get there. First thing I notice is that the front yard is not well kept. You know, little pottery and, and plants haven't been taken care of. They just so happen to be there. She probably didn't even put their put their put them there herself. So the entryway is like a hallway. I'm not gonna expose all who this person is because she might know who it is. Really I really don't give a care. I don't give a damn. But I try to be nice. Front door, I notice dirty paw marks on the door area. Like near the door handle, you can tell that the dog was trying to get in and out. Flag number 50, if you're only going to have red flags. Doors crooked when she opens it up. It crickets, makes a noise. Right? It's dark in there. Kind of cold smells like dog <sighs> she's like I warned you you're not going to give me like 5-10 minutes or so or something please at least now she's pleading right I need a little time to, to clean up I said no 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 ma'am no 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 I don't operate like that it's either now or never I walk away we're done find something else I got other things to do you deal with whatever that you got going on before you met me 
Me and my girls, we just leave. My companions, you can't worry about me. There's plenty of guys who accept you just the way you are. You know, why are you trying to get at me? You know, just because you see my, my three companions, you think you're going to just jump on board? I got standards. There's a reason why they're here, because they're not like you. You got some hurdles and some hoops to cross before you come over here, sweetie. Anyhow, we make our way in there. Now, part of that dialogue I didn't say. I'm saying that to you. To her, at that, I know what y'all thinking. To her, in that moment, I didn't have time to say all that. So what I told her was, this ain't that type of game that I'm playing. We're going to do this now or never. I did say that, but in the back of my mind, I was stating everything I just told you a few minutes ago. That's truth be told. And the girls already know, my companions already know the drill, so they're sitting there laughing. You know, they, they already know. They've been through it. I did that to them as well. So they're like, yeah, I know. I yeah, This is what it is. Deal with it. I'm not, about to, I'm not about to follow you on Instagram to figure out what type of life you live. That's a lie anyway. I'm not going to chase you down on Facebook. Okay, F your Facebook with the big F. You understand? No. I know you lie. I know y'all put a facade and pretend to be somebody that you're not. The hell with you and your lies. Absolutely not. Mm -mm. No. No way. No, we're going to do this real. Not uh, modern day lying deceptive style. We're going to do this real traditionally and organically. <laughs> so I get in there. And I'm looking around the place. Ironing board sitting right in the middle of the front room. The blinds was broken. The other blind, she had like two, two blinds. One of them, one side was broken. The other one was kind of like tilted. TV was on milk cratons, milk crates. Had a mattress on the floor where her dog was supposed to have sat at. Hair all over it. Haven't been washed. Didn't use a doggy brush. I know about all that stuff. That little sticky roller too where you can pick up hair off of. I didn't walk into the bedroom. Nor did I go into the kitchen. Nor did I need to go anywhere else. I just stood right there. And just took in everything. And said to myself. Hell no. The dishes was full of uh, plates that still had food on it. And she had a wa she had a washing machine, a dishwashing machine, but it, uh, clearly she didn't use it. On the counter, there was still this. Oh, man. I, I hate exposing this girl like that, but yeah, hey, it is what it is. Had like a macaroni dish, still had some sort of pasta or lasagna in it or some stuff and then there was a cold breeze that was coming from the other end I said you know what I'm out of here thank you for introducing us you could, uh, you can tell as well when we was walking in there it wasn't plush carpet it was the carpet was mowed down you know how you walk on the carpet so many times where it's just wore down where there's no more plushness but it had dirt streaks on it as well. Like that weren't even cleaned up. It's like she's just let it be what it is. And I said, I'm out of here. You know, this, yeah, let's go. And I felt bad for my girls because they're soldiers. They, they're down for anything. That's why I told you before one of my audios, I think I stole three angels from heaven, beat God up, gave God a black eye, and stole three angels. Actually, I actually think I did because these girls, they, they'll, they'll go through the fire and just stand there and say, well, I'm doing it for you, baby. Because they'll know I'll do that for them as well. But they're standing there holding their mouth and their nose because it smelt like the dog inside the house, too. And one of them was holding on my arm so much, I almost made my forearm bleed because she was grabbing on it tightly. They weren't getting ready to go nowhere in their house. And just looking at me without saying nothing, shaking her head. You know how you're shaking your head, no, left and right, while you're holding your mouth? That's what she was doing, like, no, no, let's go. Let's go.
go right now, Morpheus. Let's get out of here. And grabbing my arm tight with her nails in my skin. Like, this is some... This is trash over here. So we leave out, of course, and she's... <laughs> coming out afterwards talking about you know we're gonna hang out we go somewhere and i said no nah, we're, we're not we're done nope you don't make the cut now nah, we're, we're getting ready to head somewhere else but i'll uh i don't know i might call you later but don't don't wait around for it i'm good i'm gonna keep going i'm gonna keep moving We get out of her place and the three girls are like, oh my God, thank you. Oh, whoa, let's go take a shower. We need to go clean up right now. Where's your hand sanitizer? This is nasty. Women actually live like this. Yes, they do, baby. Yes. They live like this. And I told you, my girls are not American. So seeing this stuff is just like, what? In a first world country? All this technology and this, all these options, you would think with empowerment and equality. And, oh, women can do the same thing that men can do if they keep their ass clean and stop messing with mutts. But no, they got worse. And here's the beautiful part about it. This is the point of me bringing this portion of this lesson to you. Is that it was all natural. It wasn't me, uh, what do you call that, evading her privacy or her space. When you're checking people out on social media or you're following people or you're trying to figure out how they live in their normal life, you're doing the same thing, but you're doing it overtly and rather unnaturally. So you're not really getting the real person. And I wanted to see it this way because Evie, any other way, she'll be pretending. She'll be pretending to be this clean person. She'll pretend to have her life together and try to get the house all straightened out and everything and she would lie to me for a long time it would be a it, well i'm gonna say a long time it will be a uh, it will be a period of stress meaning dealing with her for a short amount of time until i am able to see her true face and how trifling she really is but being able to see her at her own habitat unmolested and unbothered or hinged by uh, expectation is just going directly to the core and dealing with that reality so I can be done with it and make my decisions so getting back to the subject I thought it was a very it should be a very intriguing side conversation that I've shared with you all these things are going on underneath the surface and it's not being talked about enough and we don't we don't discuss it we just like to go along with the american mental diseases as if it's normal and we accept bad behavior we accept a bad dirty ill moral life and then we try to pretend stupid afterwards with all these unnecessary uh, occurrences arising you know uh, viral strange bacteria and 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 donkey dunk uh, exclusive negative events that may occur. We don't talk too much about it. You know, we like to just pretend as if everybody's just doing the right thing. Everyone's just, it's just human to human, right? You know, boy meets girl, girl meets boy. They have child, that sort of thing. And they have a oop situation or maybe there is a disease between the two of them and no oh, that's just nature you know it's just it just happens you know maybe they were screwing the wrong person or people no they mess with animals too they're living lives that are here's another thing and i'm gonna go ahead and get out this audio if it's not them humping their own poor little dog okay it's them humping the drug dealers or the they're weed guy. They're weed men. That's another thing as well. If they can't be fenced the money, if they can't pay that day, or if they're behind with their payments of whatever that their uh, whatever the interaction is, you know, I'm not a dealer, so I'm just telling you how they operate, how that goes. Guess what happened? 
she's going to have to put something down or she's going to have to turn around and be down on her hands and knees. And there's no telling how many other people have been manipulated by that particular person who's just trying to keep them on the wing. Hmm? And she's not his only client. As a matter of fact, it will be her and probably thousands of other people who have to get down on their knees in order to fulfill their payment. And who's to say what type of itchy scratchy that this individual is packing. But you know, the bad reality of it is why you see most women in these disease clinics as well. It's not because it's not. They'll say that it's because men don't want to go get themselves checked out. That's only 10 percent of the reason. You know, that's BS. No, because the majority of the women are actually donkey dunking with a minority group of men. And some of them are in that uh, dealer circle. Some of them are in the position of power. So if you got, if you have 20 or 30 women knowing one dealer, they're not all going to be paying their bills quota by quota. They're not going to be fulfilling their promises all the time. They're not going to. And if he's, well, and he's a man as well. And he's going to have his needs or even seg zero needs, donkey donkey. And if he can fill in by manipulating or getting what he wants without the dollar bill being a payment, he's going to do so. But you know what? This girl don't think like that. She thinks emotionally. She don't think with her head. She thinks emotionally. She don't comprehend that she's only one out of 30 of them who's doing the same thing. So she thinks she's getting by being a, uh, a chicken head or what do you want to call them. And it's just her, but that's being done to several others. But she don't care because she's going to her source of vanity, of unnecessary carnal desires. And it's her and several other people are mainly females doing the same thing. And it goes around your state, city, country, or wherever else city that you live in. So that also equates to the percentages of why 80 to 70 to 80% of the women are always chasing the top 10, 20% of men. And some of the top 10 to 20% of men, they're in various occupations, doing various things. And then once she gets done getting the itchy scratchy or getting her back blown out by these unworthy guys or men, of the hell they are she'll bring that down home to you and say here here's my leftovers Jake the dog and Jake himself has actually been in it but uh, it is what it is let me still give it to you at a high price and uh, have you put a ring on it and marry it for the rest of your life because you are a desperate blue pill beta Joe who don't have a abundance mindset because you got one itis you're still gullible and dumb as a man to get married. So uh, let me go ahead and pretend to be a saint by pretending to be in church and say that I'm a newborn Christian and I never do things like that and make you think that I never was a wild and out girl because you're going to be dumb enough to accept my truth anyway because it's my truth. That's how it works. That's how it goes. And the whole, you know what the society would do? Silence. They say nothing. It's quiet. They don't talk about stuff like this. It's okay. But you want to know what else what happens too? There's an oops situation as well by the dope dealer. That's right. There's an oops situation by that sugar daddy. That's right. There's an oops situation by that Chad person who she slept with out in the Bahamas. You know what, know what that is? When she comes back to you and try to say that it's actually your child, but you find out through maternity tests that it's not. Let Maury show tell you this. Why is this happening? Y'all, you've been together for like 12 years with this girl. You think the daughter's really yours, but you had suspicion. We don't really look that much alike. Come to find out she did her dirty. And now you the fallback guy. 
but the society says nothing about it. Oh, it's okay. You're a man. Just deal with it. There's, there's even some court systems. Court is even as corrupt. The court system in the West is so corrupt and sick. They will even say, well, you know, you still going to have to pay child support. So what? You now the, the girl, the, the child is 12 years old. You was there, so it's still your child. You still got to pay. Still be responsible. And then, you know, some judges, the real God, hold back, hold back lightning bolts, please. Some judges who needs those lightning bolts. Okay. You know what they'll say? Uh, uh, you know, it don't matter. You still been there for the child. So just deal with it. Just deal with it. You've been there for 12 years. So what difference does it make that the child's not biologically yours? And then they'll overlook it and think it's, it's clearly okay that she committed maternity fraud. It's clearly okay that she did this. And she'll just live scot-free. With a life of such immoral debauchery. And the West is okay with that. When years ago, here's the facts. Years ago, before now. Before this day and age of morons and soft people. There used to be things called witch hunts. There used to be there used to be scarlet letters. There used to be where a woman wouldn't get away with that. She'll be chased down the street by an older woman with a pitchfork. It won't be a man doing it. It will be other listen, it will be other women chasing women down the street for that stuff. As soon as they find out, but wait a minute, this ain't his child? Oh, hell no. Uh oh. -uh. Oh no. No, you see the church people and folk and the old ladies with the with the fruit hats, they'll put their head in a ponytail, take their shoes off and say, where's she at? They'll chase her out of town. And if she's there, she'll wear a, a 304 dress so everybody knows that she's a 304. And then they'll mark her with a certain type of marker and items so every man that comes across her will know the disaster that she have did in the past on men's life that is but since we don't have any of those things anymore and everybody's you know afraid of the shaming and the the, 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 the so called backlash and the anger from those who want to get away with doing dirt of course yeah of course No one fights against it anymore. Everything is swept under the rug. It's whatever is whatever. It's dog eat dog. Literally, dog eat dog. And so now you hardly even tell if it's your child or not. Now nobody really wants to get married. Now nobody really wants to have kids for various reasons. You can't trust nobody. Because you're in a sick world with a sick time where nobody's looking for solutions. And if they did, they'd do like this. Bozo's doctor didn't just want to give you a pill instead of trying to figure out the situation in depth as he should. And here I am, without a DR, able to figure out and solve this man's life's problem in almost a month's period and didn't even get paid for it. Goes to show you right there, the system right there ain't there to try to help you. They're there to prolong the sickness so they can stay paid. When the solution is as good God common sense let me get off of this because this has been a very long strong audio and there's been so many subjects and there's been so many truths in this and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to go against what I taught you in this lesson here today I won't be surprised if I get a whole lot of hate mail and people who are dog lovers and owners who will try to come here and, oh, what are you trying to say? And you, you just against animals and you are a dog hater and, and, ah, oh, you're just, you should, you need, need to be taken down. And I didn't say I hated dogs. Shut your mouth, put dummy on the cone and sit your funny book too fast self in the corner because I didn't say that. I didn't say I didn't love animals. They didn't come out of my mouth. I said dogs are still simply animals. And I don't accept women who have or own dogs.
I didn't say I don't like dogs. I say I don't accept them who own or have dogs for various reasons. Because there is some sneaky, sick, nasty sh that goes on when the lights go out that I am not going to jeopardize my future nor my life with for any degree. I don't care how innocent it may look. Hell no, I'm not taking no opportunities or chances and I have every right and freedom of choice to do so. It's my preference. If you don't like it, take you and your dog loving ass somewhere else. I like cats over here. Has nothing to do with hatred. It's life and reality. And some of you don't like it because you're doing the sick yourself. If the shoe don't fit, shut the hell up. Period. This is yours truly, your professor, Leon C., a.k.a. Morpheus. And you have been given good information from the Academy of Wow Men. And there will be, I promise, more to come that I will deliver unto you.